Hi, everyone. Um, uh, for those who might have uh, joined me last time for the other webinars, uh, welcome back. Thank you for joining me again for another exciting webinar. Um, I will be, uh, like Michael said, presenting uh, how to program with um, uh, sort of simple programming using machine logic. Um, so uh, let's let's get started. All right. So uh, here's why we we created created machine logic actually. So um, we we started by uh, this new uh, invention hardware, which was designed for like to be compatible with the same fasteners. Um, it shipped as a kit, um, and uh, really was like I said, designed to be all compatible. Um, so we wanted to simplify the hardware. Uh, when it's not done, we also created uh, the machine builder uh, to provide you with uh, sort of 3D designing that is simplified. Um, so you, you can just like uh, have a, a parts browser and you just like drop the parts uh, in the 3D space and just snap them just like magnets, uh, speeding up your, your, your design process. Um, and, uh, and after that, we didn't stop. We, we continued to develop the platform and realized that um, for automation, there, there, was, there were no um, products that were uh, sort of plug and play and simple uh, just to deploy like linear axis and um, any, uh, any kind of, of movement uh, that, that you would, do, uh, would like to do uh, very simply. So uh, we released machine motion. Um, so and we didn't stop there. Uh, the, earlier this uh, this year, we, we released uh, machine logic, uh, where we realized that with, with, with the machine motion, we, you you have a, a good option for you to uh, uh, deploy your, your axes, but um, with uh, but you didn't have any simple ways to actually like program something a bit more com complex. Um, very quickly, so uh, so that's why we, we brought up machine logic. Is we need to, to uh, sort of close the loop and uh, bring you with uh, like the hardware and then the, the, the design um, software to to build all of that. Have the the, the automated uh, automation controller to to keep it simple and then a, a simple way to program all of that. Um, and, and truly, as you will see, and as you can see on the screen, um, it's all drop-down menus, so you don't uh, you don't have to, um, to 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 be like a PhD in programming. Uh, really, you're, we're giving you like um, uh, sort of um, all the options you need, uh, but really put simple um, with, with a few ways to. Uh, uh, to, to, to program what, what you what you want to do, like with the, let's say whether if it's just the seven axis or something Cartesian, um, or just like a uh, uh, something would run uh, all day long, or just like an R and D application where you want to test a few things. So uh, it really gives you a lot of possibilities, um, <clears throat> and. Um, uh, for those who, who uh, were already our customers, well. Thank you for that first. And <laughs> you, you, uh, if you already own the machine motion controller, you might know um, this interface. So that was uh, the machine apps. Uh, so it, it, I honestly did a, a great job by uh, for like booting uh, your uh, your machine motion. Just if you wanted to play with it, uh, get the hang of of, of machine motion, and uh, you can think of. Uh, machine logic now as uh, the machine apps like on steroids. steroids. Like it's really like powered up and so much more powerful. But yet we kept the, the simple interface and we even uh, made it better by uh, implementing it in the in the three D design. Um, so so basically, uh, just wanted to give you a bit more context on why we thought of bringing that up. Before we kick off into the three topics of what we're gonna be presenting to you guys, so as you can see on your screen, it says that we're gonna go through setting up, setting up a single access programming and then going through our Cartesian programming. So take it away, Matt. All right, thank you, Michael. Uh, I'll start by uh, giving you sort of the outline of what I wanna to present today. Um, and I really want to start uh, by the basics, like um, uh, 
to, to sort of make sure that uh, your machine logic program will, will function correctly, we'll, we'll start by uh, setting up um, like an automated product. Like we'll start with the, uh, a single access. And uh, you'll see that uh, there's a few things that we need to uh, make sure uh, to, to pay the attention it needs uh, so that everything run, runs smoothly. Um, so we're uh, set up. And uh, once everything is configured, uh, we will make a uh, simple program for uh, for this uh, for single access programming, uh, giving you a few um, examples of uh, uh, how it can be used and what, what are the strengths of it. And uh, as um, probably a few of you uh, realized, like um, uh, we we already have uh, the UR cap uh, program that integrates very well. Uh, with the uh, UR robots, as we can see here, and um, the, 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 the machine motion uh, controller. Um, so actually, the, 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 there's two reasons why you would like uh, to use machine logic uh, with, with UR. Um, so the, the first one uh, would be to actually um, see in 3D uh, at first like um, how, how it's going to move. Uh, like you, you can uh, actually make make your simulate your, your robot like moving from one spot to another. I know that uh, simulation uh, was one of the uh, one of the, 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 the things that you ask uh, most often. Mm -hmm. uh, people uh, saw the, the, the power of the of the platform in the three D builder, uh, but once they started to program some uh, not necessarily program but design some axes and, and different movements. Uh, they wanted to have a way to make it move, and uh, it's all about making sure it doesn't collide here and there, and you want to tweak it, and you, you want to know if you have like enough reach. So in this case, um, it really allows you to uh, move your robot at the right place and making sure it has the right reach. And the second uh, uh, reason why I wanted to present you that is we just released um, sort of the, the flexible uh, robot, which is available for uh, all of our partner models. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm going to uh, give you a sneak peek of uh, how it works at the same time, uh, just so you can have like a full uh, reach study, not only about like travel, but also about like making the robot arm move and making sure it can reach the, the right spot. Then um, I'm prepared for the last piece, uh, something a bit more advanced. Uh, we're going to talk about Cartesian programming. And uh, really to give you like a, a hint of like uh, how uh, powerful but yet simple can uh, machine logic be. Um, I have like two programs I want to show you for, for uh, the people that uh, uh, assisted my, my uh, previous webinar on choosing um, your, your actuators and sizing your stepper motors. Uh, we, we did take a look at the scanning application, so uh, I'll go. Uh, uh, a bit more in depth in what you can do and how to uh, uh, interact with different sequences. So first, uh, setting up your uh, your axis. Um, so um, three simple steps. Um, you need to log into your account uh, on Vention.io. Very important. <laughs> um, start a new design on on Machine Builder. Um, then uh, I, I, I sort of wrote a list of the minimum components you're, you will need uh, in order to uh, have a machine logic program that, that is functioning. Like I said, three, three simple steps. Um, and the list is a machine motion controller, for sure. Uh, your actuator, either it is like a timing belt, a ball screw. Um, it could be like a, also a rack and pinion that we, we just uh, released uh, lately. And uh, also, I'll give you a sneak peek about uh, the electrical actuators, uh, the indexer, uh, and the conveyor rollers. Um, so those are all possibilities for actuators. Um, uh, you need a gantry plate, if um, that's it for a timing belt or a ball screw. Uh, you, know, you will also need two sensors, and I will talk about them, like why it's super important to have two of them. Um, one stepper motor, uh, guide shaft with bearings or rollers. Um, so let's switch gear and go uh, to directly in the, the, the machine builder and uh, I'll get our stuff set up. Um, so uh, once you've created a new design, you will then here with uh, uh, the, 
interface of the machine builder. The parts browser in your, is on your left, uh, as you, um, as I mentioned before. Here we have now the category partner models. So if you open that up, you will see the Yaskawa and the three uh, URs that we know. Um, and um, basically, you just need to take one. And I'll use the, the UR3. We're going to need it today, so it's going to be already in there. And then all you need to do is make a right click and edit robots. And uh, uh, basically, um, you can use any of the joints and uh, make them move to your configuration you're looking for. And you can also use that green ball to uh, actually move it into position. So first, all right, what do we want to set up? Like I said, we need uh, a machine motion. So we'll go into control, get our controller, and uh, select the um, either one, two, or three axis. This time, we're only um, setting up a single axis so we can uh, use that one axis. Um, so OK, so controller is in. Uh, we need an actuator. So this time, uh, we want to build like, a range extender for UR3. We can use. Uh, the actuator for uh, the, the timing belt actuator for its speed. So um, I'll make sure to go into motion. And um, actually, it's right up here. Um, and it's going to be into a timing belt, of course. Uh, and you can select the, the, the length uh, directly from this drop down here. Uh, or you can uh, pick like any length and uh, make sure to click on it. Uh, click anywhere in the 3D space to uh, make it appear. And uh, as you can see, uh, now it's going to offer you to adjust the size either of your extrusions or uh, your timing belt uh, to the size you need. Uh, this time, we'll, we'll, we'll use the maximum length uh, that we have readily available in stock. Um, so. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, um, as, a, as a hint, uh, we, we've just released uh, the rack and pinion. Um, so if you want to uh, build like very, very long range extenders, um, I, I would recommend using those. Uh, basically, uh, it can go uh, as long as you want to build it, because like with the, the, the modular racks that you, you add directly to the extrusion, so let me add an extrusion in. Um, you just need to go into motion and click on any of the racks. And as you can see, like it, it snaps inside of the T slot, so you can build like an axis as long as you need. Um, all right, so this time we'll, we'll keep the uh, timing belt and keep it simple. Um, but make sure that to have this in mind if you want to build that kind of uh, actuator. Um, we also um, just released in the CAD uh, the rotary actuator, uh, also called uh, Lazy Susan. Um, and uh, actually, uh, you can make uh, either uh, either side rotate. So that's really cool. And it's also going to be uh, supported in the machine logic uh, very soon. Um, so uh, as you can see, we'll, we'll have the, the, the ability to uh, have like a multiple axes and um, both uh, linear and rotary. Um, all right, so that's about the rotary actuator. But let's get back to our, sort of our main topic. Um, and, um, and so now we, we now that we have our uh, timing belt actuator, uh, we we're going to need uh, something to um, sort of drive this, this actuator, right? So uh, we're going to add a stepper motor. I'm uh, just going to select the medium one for this time. Um, and uh, also, one, th one good thing to, uh, to note uh, is that uh, if you want just to make sure that uh, the, the commissioning is very simple, um, the, the stepper motor uh, sort of natural um, rotation sense uh, with, the, the, with the help of the machine motion uh, is uh, clockwise. Uh, so if you uh, if you put your your stepper motor this way um, and, and you look at uh, the front shaft like the driving shaft 
um, it, it's, it will naturally uh, rotate uh, clockwise when it tries to find home for the first time. Uh, so uh, I would suggest uh, to put it on um, uh, to put it in a way that it sort of brings the, the, the gantry plate to like next to the stepper motor and just more simple to add your home sensor uh, next to the stepper and stepper motor so you're always sure to uh, connect your wires um, uh, correctly otherwise you just need to switch the, the sensors uh, from 1a to 1b um, so um, next uh, talking about sensors we're going to add them uh, so make sure to for timing belts we, we designed something um, that is both a hand stop and also a bracket for your sensors um, so it's it's fairly uh, um, compact and uh, really uh, make sure to, to select the right one because like uh, uh, of course if I I chose the other one it would interfere with uh, with the stepper um, so now I just need to go into control and select the sensor so whenever you have um, sort of like a, a end stop and homing sensor um, and you have a lot of uh, aluminum parts or, or, or any metallic uh, plates as well. Um, so you can use the M M18 uh, proximity sensors. Uh, they work really well. They're really nicely integrated with the machine motion. So we would recommend to use those. Uh, the other sensors that we have here uh, in stock uh, ready to ship are, um, are, are for other types of applications such as like if you build like a com uh, conveyor and you want to detect when there's a box at the end of the conveyor, uh, we generally recommend to use the retroreflective and so on for the other sensors. Um, so uh, all right, we, we have our uh, proximity sensor here. Uh, we want to add an end stop, so I'll make sure to go on the other side and go back into motion and choose an end stop add a sensor um, right here. There you go. Um, and also uh, keep in mind if you if you are designing uh, like a uh, multi-axis design, um, I would recommend to add your sensors in sequence and you're going to see why. Um, it's going to be a lot easier uh, to um, identify them when you're going to configure your, your machine logic. Uh, so just a quick tip here. Uh, so in sequence, I mean like if you um, add your sensors, go and do like the home sensor for the x-axis and the end stop sensor for the x-axis, and then switch to the y and the z uh, afterwards. Um, all right. So um, we have our sensors. We have actuator, stepper motor. Uh, we need uh, actually a gantry plate for sure. Uh, so we're going back to motion. I uh, will select the um, 225 by 225 gantry plate. Since we want to mount the robot on, uh, it has a nice fit with the robot mounting plate. Um, and um, I was talking about like the, 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 the way you can mount your sensors, and, uh, and this is why. So um, with those end stop brackets, uh, it's, it's always sort of a perfect fit with the gantry plate on the timing belt, as you can see. Uh, this the sort of the, the the line of sight of the sensor um, crosses exactly the uh, the gantry plate, so uh, you're, you're sort of guaranteed uh, that both uh, in real life and both for the uh, the CAD the the, the, the three D builder, um, it, it's going to uh, see the plate moving and stop it at the right place or home it. Um, so very important. Um, one thing to note is that we have this, this bracket here and um, you, you could uh, use it uh, to sense the plate like from the, from the bottom, uh, but uh, you will notice that for machine logic um, at the moment it's, it's best just to put it in line uh, as you, you, you will sort of guarantee that it's going to stop at the right place. So if, if your, your, your intention is to use, uh, let's say, like a sensor in this way, uh, when you're going to actually deploy your machine, um, in the meantime, uh, for, uh, for your, your, your simulation, uh, make sure to put it uh, in line so you can move it like without, uh, without it being attached 
and uh, just just um, use any. Uh, of the, you just need to detach it and use the, the triads. So either you use the, the arrows like this, or you can use the left and right arrow of your keyboard uh, to switch sort of the degrees, uh, not only the degrees of freedom, but uh, how it can move. And you can access sort of this uh, plane thing. Move. So I'm just moving it in X, Z. And basically, you can uh, make it, leave it float into space um, for, for the simulation. That's, that's OK. Um, and as long as it's in the line of sight of a uh, uh, component, uh, either like aluminum or aluminum type component, you're going to be just fine. Um, so I'll remove this bracket for now and this sensor. Uh, so right now, the scan tree plate, it looks like it's um, sort of already in line and everything, but um, it's missing something to carry it. So uh, we need either, uh, like I said, um, uh, guide shaft or rollers, so um, make sure to go back to motion. Uh, this time we'll use guide shaft for a very nice guiding, and uh, also it's going to nicely support the different uh, torque uh, that our, our um, robot is going to uh, sort of uh, uh, put on on our gantry plate. So, all right, so one act, um, one guide rail on this side. Uh, what I like to do is just like flip my camera to the other side and use the I key of your keyboard like to reinsert quickly uh, the last part you uh, you selected. Um, so you can just like uh, move your cursor on the extrusion, and even if it's not at the, at the right spot, like you've seen uh, for the other one, uh, you can just like snap snap it uh, or at the sort of at the right row <laughs> next to the gantry plate, and then uh, click on it and use the slider to just put it in the right place. Um, so uh, now we just need to add some bearings, because uh, obviously we want to transmit the force <laughs> from, uh, from the gantry plate uh, to uh, the guide rail. Um, so bearings right here. Um, so the, the bearings, uh, I know it can be confusing, like where do they go? Uh, there's a lot of hole on the gantry plate. Uh, we know, like, we wanted to provide you with a lot of possibilities, and you will see why in, in a few minutes. There's a nice way to mount that robot plate, and thanks to that, those many <laughs> old patterns. Um, but um, one, one thing I, I like to tell uh, my customers is um, they can look at the back of the gantry plate once it's attached to the timing belt. Uh, for those uh, slightly counterboard holes, so they're, they're, they're just recessed just a bit. And the reason why is that they, they sort of uh, make a nice fit for those rollers. Uh, but it's also the, the same spot that we use uh, for the, the bearing, so very easy to identify. Look for like two, uh, two holes with uh, a, a very small counter counterboard. Um, so you just need to click on the bearing, uh, shoot for those uh, the middle of those two holes, and uh, maybe use the right and uh, left arrows um, to position it properly. Uh, of course, your bearing it needs to be open towards the mounting side, uh, but it won't prevent you uh, from running machine logic. But it's always better to have a uh, better reflection of reality. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so just switch to the other side, do the same thing. Um, all right, um, so uh, right now we have pretty much everything we need um, basically to finish that, uh, that axis. If you wanted to mount it on something, uh, you can go back to structural and use uh, the GP gusset, the flat gusset, so you can be attached to like a flat working surface. Um, so I'm just going to add four in there just for now, but uh, depending on how much force uh, you're, you're uh, is going to be applied on your gantry plate. You might want to add some more. Uh, make sure to save once in a while if your auto save is not set. And if it's not set, or if you're unsure, uh, going to settings. It's right here in general. Um, I, I like to keep mine un unchecked because I, I prefer to save myself. Uh, uh, but uh, make sure to uh, put your setting at your liking. Um, all right, so we have um, our UR3 here that you, we want to mount on there. Um, so for UR3, uh, we need to find a proper um, uh, robot plate. So um, you might have noticed that uh, there are uh, two different um, sizes of uh, robot plates for UR3. Um, the reason why 
is like uh, both of them are compatible both with your E, uh, your three, sorry, CB series and E series. Um, but one is a little bigger uh, and has more more holes. Uh, the reason is uh, just for, for like the sizing of your application. So let's say that you already designed something uh, for UR10, and um, uh, all the UR10 have sort of this bigger plate, 225 by 225 millimeters, uh, and you just want to mount a, a UR3 on it with the, um, the dowel pins, because we, we have a plate that does the three of them, but doesn't have the dowel pins for repeatability. So uh, <laughs> if you want to use the dowel pins, have like two plates, uh, you can use the same size. So that's why we, we added in there. But uh, in this case, like the, the smaller one will do just fine. So we're going we're gonna, to um, just insert this one. Um, so once it's inserted, um, uh, again, there's so many holes in there that it might be hard uh, to connect at the right spot. Um, but what I uh, the, the tips I, I would like to share with you uh, is actually a new feature that we released, uh, which is called manual constraint. Uh, so at the bottom uh, of your screen, uh, you will see uh, this, this logo here uh, with a small plus. Um, so it's like a data logo with a plus, and it's called manual constraint. Um, it, it sort of uh, works like um, a, a uh, sort of a, a flat surface constraint uh, in other um, CAD that you, you probably know. Um, so um, first, you just need to enable it. Uh, move your mouse to any parts uh, that you would like to connect. Uh, so first, we want to connect this robot plate to the gantry plate. So uh, we're going to select uh, the back of the plate. So that's why I just rotated it. Um, and uh, we're going to obviously mount it by one of the four holes here. So just make, make sure to click on any of them. And then um, um, you, you just need to uh, find your threaded hole um, that, uh, that that fits what, what you were uh, sort of the place that you want to put it on. Uh, I'll just do a small control, um, control Z to undo. Um, so that uh, so that you can see how it works, but um, basically uh, all the small holes with uh, a, a little chamfer there uh, are, are threaded holes. So let me put it back here, and also uh, I'll just uh, remind for those who you might not know um, how to mount a um, any imported part. Um, if it has a round feature, it's even easier. Uh, so. Um, for any imported parts or partner models, uh, you just need to make a right click, create a connector, and uh, select an edge uh, if you want to snap exactly to the middle of that circle. Otherwise, you could like place your connector anywhere on the robot or on the on the plate. But if you want to make it like standing up, uh, it's going to be better if you select the edge. So uh, just click on there, um, and right now your connector is going to be exactly at the center. And just make sure to drag and uh, drop it on the mounting plate, uh, and it's going to be attached. So good, we have uh, our axis uh, set up. So we'll let, make sure to uh, make a save. And uh, now we can start programming. Uh, we, we have our, our axis set up, um, and you have your, your machine motion. So that's very important. That's what's going to enable that, that menu here. You might want to put it on the right side, though. So, you know, um, but in important pins, we, we don't want to damage it. <laughs> um, OK, so um, uh, you just need to click here on machine logic. It's, it's going to open up this window. Um, and uh, first, uh, first things first, uh, you need to configure it as a, so the landing uh, tab of uh, the machine logic. Uh, so make sure to uh, click on Add New Access. Uh, this time it's pretty easy. We only have one, so um, don't really need to name it. But um, you can give it a name that anyone it could be like X Y Z or like Gary's Access. So I'll just like use X Access. Um, you uh, and then you need to make sure to select the the, the right type of actuator. Uh, like I said, uh, we will add pretty soon uh, the indexer as an option to the machine logic. Uh, and uh, other components like uh, conveyor, and et cetera. Um, but right now, uh, make sure to select the right one between the belt actuator, ball screw, and rack and pinion. 
Uh, they have a different gain, uh, meaning for every turn of your stepper motor, uh, your gain tree will not move at the same spot for, for all of them. Uh, just to give you a rough idea, that's, that's why the timing belt is uh, so quick, is that um, for every turn of your stepper motor, full turn, it's going to give you 150 millimeters compared to the ball screw, where it's going to give you 10 millimeters, but with a bigger force. So that, um, make sure to uh, take a look uh, at uh, the, the video um, uh, we recorded last time for the other webinar if you want to know more about those um, on YouTube. We posted it on YouTube. Um, and now we introduce the racket pin, which is sort of a compromise in between. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's faster than the ball screw, uh, but stronger than the belt actuator. So again, um, uh, make sure to select the right one. Uh, well, in our case, <laughs> The one you, you put in your design, that's going to be a good start. Um, and then you just need to click on the, the actuator. Um, and again, if you have more than one, uh, you just need to uh, sort of mouse over this little checkbox to uh, see, see it highlighted. Um, and then uh, you need to put your sensors. And as I said before, uh, if you put them into sequence, uh, you should find uh, that um, sort of the lower number is the first one you selected. It's also going to be highlighted, but it's going to be a little hard if uh, your axis is also uh, highlighted. You can click anywhere in the CAD to uh, sort of um, make the highlighting disappear, sort of reset it. And if you move next to your selection, you will see it. It's highlighted next to the motor. That's what we wanted. Homing sensor right there and end stop sensor right here. OK. so. Uh, access is configured, we can carry on um, and click on application. Um, so just to um, uh, give you an idea of how we built that. Um, so um, an application is a, sort of a program that, that will run, run on its own. So you can have like a, a one design with uh, more than one application. Like if you want to uh, built uh, different uh, sort of routines for 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 your uh, for your access. You're you're going to want to add more applications for that. So uh, we're going to start with one. Um, and uh, inside, uh, so make sure to click on the plus to add your application. Uh, again, name it. So this time we'll just call it like um, we're going to go. Let's say like all the way and, and stop at the middle. So all the way, uh, stop at mid. You can name it however you want, whatever makes sense for you. Um, and then click on New Sequence. Um, also, you can rename the sequence as well. So a sequence is like a, a part of your application. So um, this time, um, we can you, you can put all of your movements inside of one sequence. Uh, but uh, once you, you get to more advanced programming inside machine logic, you're going to want to uh, create more sequence, and we'll, we'll see why in this the, the last part of the, of the webinar with the Cartesian application. So um, this time we can just uh, call it like main uh, main sequence if you want to. All right, good. So um, all right. So inside of the, the sequence menu is where you want to uh, sort of uh, put your, your different actions. Uh, so the, the first thing uh, you want to do is make sure that uh, everything it goes home to sort of have this reference point uh, and make sure that you have this uh, repeatability and precision. So um, we're going to home our x-axis. Again, if you add more than one axis, this is where you will change it. And uh, let me show you the different um, options that we have for this move button. So like I said uh, at the beginning, uh, we really wanted to uh, provide you with some like uh, menus that you know that, that talks to you. Like, uh, um, so that's why like, it's all uh, drop down menus and, and, and buttons. Uh, you don't need to know how to code into Python or JavaScript. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be for all the programs all going to be like managed by, by those buttons. So here with um, the the move button, uh, you have like stop all motion, move absolute, move relative, set speed, set acceleration, and index or angle 
once once we'll we'll get there very soon. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> um, so um, about a move relative and move absolute, you might wonder like why do we have like two different kind of moves? Um, so actually, um, for the, the the simple application, I would recommend to uh, sort of remain all the time in in absolute moves. Uh, so what it means is that from your home point, uh, that's your home point is going to be zero, and from there, um, it can go up to the, the max length, the max travel of your of your um, of your axis. Um, so in this case, we have a uh, two two nine five uh, axis, uh, and we, we we need to subtract uh, the the width of the, the the gantry plate to know the net travel and also subtract the, uh, just the thickness of those plates. Um, so uh, you can calculate it either like with uh, the measuring tool if you want to make sure. Um, but uh, you, but roughly uh, this one, uh, the gantry plates are either like 225 or 180. Um, and those uh, those little bumpers um, are about I think it's like 11 uh, millimeters uh, of, the, of difference. So uh, yeah, we can actually measure it from here to the end of the shaft there, 11.25. Um, all right, so times two, uh, we can add that up. So let me uh, get my calculator calculator out. So 2295. Minus two to three and eleven point two five times two. We have a net travel of uh, um, two meter and fifty millimeters. So two zero five zero um, rounded up. Um, right. So two zero five zero. Remember that as it's going to be sort of the the the, uh, the, the end stop. Um, uh, but um, you, even if you would input something bigger than that, uh, it's going to be stopped by your sensor. Um, so we'll go back to our sequence. We want a home first. Uh, then the, the, the second thing you want to go uh, want to do is set your speed and acceleration for the rest of your sequence. Uh, so that's that needs to be set at first, and that can be changed after as well. Um, but make sure to set it first so that you you have sort of the, 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 the time the cycle time you're looking for. Um, so uh, and I'll show you a little trick if you want to make everything move at the, the maximum for simulation, uh, even though maybe it's not going to be supported by your choice of stepper motors. Uh, so be careful with that. Uh, but uh, just for simulation, you can make it move at, at max speed. And let's say that we wanted to make it move at Sort of a ten thousand uh, millimeter for uh, ten thousand million <laughs> millimeter per second. <laughs> We're gonna stop you at <laughs> ten thousand straight. So um, you can uh, you can just type in the biggest number you have in mind. We'll max you out <laughs> just for security. Uh, and same goes with the acceleration. Um, you can you can select the, the max, which is five hundred millimeter per second square. Uh, so that that is done. Um, and then what we uh, want to do is um, move to the, the end stop. That's what we wanted. Uh, so we said two zero five zero. Uh, then, if we keep uh, that in absolute, uh, we want to go to half this distance. So two zero five zero divided by two gives you one zero two five uh, to the midpoint. And then we want to come back home. Uh, so um, you're probably thinking, yeah, we, we could just like select uh, this home feature. Uh, yeah, that, 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 that would bring your, your robot home after all of this, but it would bring it at the home speed. So um, if, you're, if you want to make sure that it goes back to uh, uh, like position zero uh, at this for the cycle time you need, uh, you will need to uh, use a move absolute again and just leave it at zero. Um, all right, and uh, like I said, you, you could do the math with like the relative position and uh, move by increments um, uh, if you need to. Um, 
But uh, again, there, there's more chances to uh, get mixed up, and like um, if if you you make some changes, you're you're all gonna have to change your increments like in the, the next move. So it's always a lot simpler to just use uh, move absolute uh, when you can, um, and the move relative keep them for uh, sort of, sort of those those increments that you would need uh, maybe for more like and sort of advanced application. Um, let's say that the, uh, and, and basically we'll get there, but um, let's say that you have a precise pattern, so you're, you're going to want to move relative like 10 times for, for a five millimeter, for example. Um, all right, so um, and after uh, we've completed this, I think we, we have all we need right now. So let's take a, a first run at it. Make sure to save again. Uh, every changes that you make inside the machine logic uh, will uh, sort of affect uh, your, um, your 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 design. So uh, when you make a copy of your design, you're also making a copy of machine logic, um, and uh, also you can uh, you know that you can export your three D design and you can also export just the machine logic part of it. And same goes for the upload slash import. OK, so you can uh, press play here and uh, make your uh, entry move. So um, <laughs> going back home, going all the way at max speed, uh, stopping there. And as you can see, it's all, it already sort of calculates um, when it needs to decelerate and everything. Uh, so you don't need to sort of uh, uh, write out your, your curve of acceleration and deceleration. I calculated it, calculated it um, for you already. Um, so um, there's two things that I want to show you that might happen uh, for more uh, complex axes. Um, like I said before, I just want to show you uh, what will happen if, uh, for example, if you put your home sensor at the wrong spot. Um, so if we just move it out of out of place. And then we save and press play. Um, your robot will just disappear <laughs> as it tries to find home, and it's, it's just gone. So make sure to press stop and we can reappear. Whew! And <laughs> and uh, yeah, and you you'll solve it. So if that happens to you, make sure to have your sensor in line with your gantry plate. Uh, it's going to work. And uh, same goes for the end stop. Uh, basically, make sure it's in line. Otherwise, it can like over travel. And um, again, just a, um, a quick uh, uh, sort of tip about um, uh, like the, the end stop and how it, it, it really works. So uh, just to give you an example, if uh, I was to put uh, like uh, uh, intentionally, intentionally like a, um, a distance that is uh, further than what my axis can do, or like further than uh, actually my the position of my end stop. Uh, like, let me move it closer here, and let, let's make it move. Uh, you will notice that it's going to stop at the sensor. Uh, so uh, the next step, the next step uh, will will still like uh, go on. Like a, even if I told him to go all the way, it will stop at the sensor, which make it safe. Uh, um, but uh, if I was to uh, use the move relatives instead of uh, move absolute, it would still compute from uh, the, 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 the position I input it here uh, at the step four at like the, the last position. So you will notice, like, let me uh, just show you that example real quick. If I uh, put like 150 uh, and save, you will see that it will just not move because um, the, the, the sort of the gantry thinks that it's still like at the end stop, and then if it needs to move relative 150 uh, millimeter, like it didn't do the, the mid stop as you as you notice, it, it skips straight to the zero position because uh, like it's in between. So just a thing to keep in mind when uh, you're you're uh, creating your program. Um, so good. All right. So. Um, Make sure to, to save all that, and uh, we'll move on. So here, uh, I wanted to uh, give you a Cartesian application for uh, for a drilling station. Um, so what I have here is a tree axis machine, uh, all with ball screw actuators. Um, and I have a drill in the middle. Uh, right now, it stands sort of in, in the middle of the plate. but. 
Um, that, that's just uh, um, about like the, the, the position of where I put the uh, the boss code first, so don't mind that. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so basically you have the Z axis right here, the Y and the X um, on uh, like the dual X. Um, so uh, we want to open up machine logic, and also I just want to let you know uh, this example here is on the public designs. So we can go into public design and look for like drill jig or drilling station, and you should find this one. And if you want to play with uh, the different applications that I like, created for it, uh, you can just like customize it instead of publish here. It's going to be written uh, customized, and uh, you will have access to those applications. You can sort of start from there or just explore. Um, so today I want to talk about like this two axis plate drilling application that I created. Um, so, um, as you can see, that's all the sequences for um, my application. And um, when, when you click on the name of your application, uh, that's where you're going to have access to um, sort of modify um, either like the, the, uh, your, your configuration of your sequences, if you have more than one, and uh, you want to make sure that they, they run in and in, in a specific order, you can move them like this. Um, uh, and also, you will notice that your first sequence will always be locked as like the first sequence to start. Uh, and this is where, if you want to uh, sort of have a program that loops forever, um, you can. Uh, so which one do you choose, loop or forever? <laughs> so forever will make it loop forever. It will never stop. Uh, and loop is going to be for a certain kind of time. So. Uh, uh, if you want to make it uh, look for 50 times, you can put 50 here, and you will see your uh, master sequence moving 50 times. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, it can be uh, super um, interesting to do that if you want to like move in increments that are repeatable. Uh, in, in this case, we want to match this uh, whole pattern. So um, uh, we won't really use the, the, the counts uh, of looping, so we're, we're keeping everything into sequences. Uh, but let me show you a bit uh, first uh, how it works, and then we'll go back and uh, I'll explain how I did it. So uh, you can uh, minimize this um, uh, this window and click play. Uh, to act and actually to click play, um, you uh, you really need to select your your application first. Uh, so that's why at first your um, your menu is not uh, sort of. Um, in, in dark blue, it's like in gray. Uh, so you really need to select your, your uh, which of, of the applications you want to play, because uh, otherwise it, it just doesn't know. Um, so it seems like uh, I might have played with uh, too many things and I, and I made a save. So if that happens, just do a, a good old uh, uh, reboot of your, of your page. Uh, usually that's what's uh, to solve like what 99% of your computer problem, just just reboot it. But rest assured, we don't need to reboot the webinar. <laughs> it's just the page. So um, all right, I probably had it um, up for too long, and we just timed out. So um, make sure to press on that again. Select your application. Press play either from here or from there. So there you go. So what I did at first is to home. Uh, my all of my axes, uh, just uh, to, again to have this uh, repeatability. Then set the height uh, I wanted at first. Look for the first hole, and this is like all uh, programmed. And then going to move um, by an increment, going to the next hole. And uh, what I did is like a uh, sort of a, a bit like a printer, you know, like in going like row by row. Um, so as you can see, I finished my first row. I'm going up a bit and doing the second one. The, the two holes are in line. So I'll do the same uh, for those um, and, and so on for, for the other holes. So I'll, I'll show you how I did this. Um, so if we open back this uh, window, and as you can see, uh, when it's running, it's going to show you in green what is active, which sequence is active. Um, so, um, for instance, this, this one's not active right now. And if we want to change anything uh, directly um, while you have this open, make sure to make a stop on your 
uh, on your application before you even change, otherwise it won't be saved, well, it won't allow you to change anything anyway. Um, all right, so, uh, oops, not the right application, two-click drilling. So master here, um, like I said, I home, set my speed, set acceleration, very important. Then um, uh, set uh, sort of the initial position of my axis. And then this is where the, the fart part, uh, fun part comes. Um, so you have this button here, run sequence. Uh, it looks like a lightning bolt. Um, so uh, it's going to trigger uh, either to call or execute. Uh, it's very simple. Call is parallel, execute is in series. So what I wanted to do is like from my master sequence, uh, sort of take a stop, uh, take, take a break from, from, from uh, right after step eight and jump into uh, the other sequence that I call uh, one X plate, so one, one time plate. Um, so then from this plate, uh, what I did is uh, I, I called other sequences. So that's how you sort of um, do the architecture of uh, your uh, programming of your machine logic. So you go into a sequence and you can call other sequences. If your intent is to call them more than once, if you're, you're, you're planning to uh, sort of repeat the same thing inside of your sequence, you might as well just uh, create another small sequence and call it many times so you don't have to uh, type in every time all the, the, the parameters. It, it's just so much simpler. And then uh, inside of the, those smaller sequence, for example, like uh, sort of the end sequence, the, 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 the one that are just like acting, uh, have like reset Y, so reset my Y axis to um, the right edge of the plate. Um, and I, I put my absolute position there. So if I want to change that reset, like I can do from here, and it's going to affect all the, the uh, the, the whole application, so you don't have to go through every box and change your your um, your position at every spot. So that's why you want to create like more than, than one sequence. Um, so going back to the one plate, so basically I'm I'm going um, to execute all of those uh, sort of little workers that are move, move, making move uh, the different axes, and um, and then uh, going back to the master, uh, so it does one plate, then I, I made it move to, to go uh, to the next plate. Uh, so move relative to the next one, uh, then do the second plate, and then home at the end. So that's, that's pretty much it. And um, I'll just give you a very quick look of uh, the 100 by 100 grid. Um, I can make it run at the same time. Uh, but basically, um, what I wanted to show you about like the looping um, is that from here, um, I, I sort of again created um, some some x and y movement uh, by just like small increment in moving relative. And the reason why is like for a hundred and hundred grid of like either like scanning, drilling, or something. Um, <clears throat> When you want to move by increments, again, you might have to create like a small piece of, of sequence and loop it like a hundred times and just call it once from, from your program. So if I go into that, because um, I, and as you can see, my architecture was like A, B, and C, C1, and C2. Uh, so from, from my C uh, sequence, um, I just said like execute this X movement plus. Um, and uh, every time you call this, it's going to um, actually loop for a hundred times where you find it here. Uh, so that's that's how they, they sort of all intertwine, and um, and that's that's how you can get the the best of uh, machine logic. Um, so uh, I hope this was clear. Uh, I know there's a lot of buttons, a lot of stuff. So like I said, don't hesitate to to reach out um, if you have the sort of any question more related to how it's your, what you want to do, and we can help you uh, sort of uh, with the, 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 get you started with, uh, uh, with the, the type of application that you have. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful. Feel free to email marketing at vention.cc with any questions or any feedback on this particular webinar that we've had. Um, it was a pleasure to host it. And we hope that you guys enjoyed all of Mac's tips. <laughs> so stay tuned for our next one, and we look forward to having you again.